Rockstar has always been one of my favorite companies, with Red Dead Redemption being one of my favorite games of all time, and GTA V always being a game I love jumping into, I cannot tell you how important that company is to me. But no matter how much I like them, there's always some way some corrupt entity will ruin the things you care about, and this happened recently with Rockstar. Let's take a step back first and talk about a company called Take-Two Interactive. See, Take-Two is the father company to Rockstar, deciding what games are sold where, what business practices will be implemented in their games, and most importantly, how the communities around their games are to be treated. This kind of relationship, for lack of a better word, can be likened to electronic arts. The company that has become iconic for snatching up older or dying companies, making them reproduce a popular title, destroy it in not only story or mechanics areas, but also in terms of consumerism, i.e. adding in microtransactions at every turn. Then letting the company take all the flack as they absorb the money and drop them like the worthless company everyone now feels they are, and move on to their next fully suspecting victim, who's simply trying to keep their head above the water. In regards to Take-Two, they at least care about Rockstar. Rockstar's been their cash cow for a decent amount of time, but recently, Take-Two has decided they don't really care that much about their games anymore, and especially, their consumers. Uh, Barry? That's ridiculous. Take-Two loves their community. Oh, is that so? Well, let's take a look real quick at what Take-Two's CEO Strauss Zelnick had to say regarding GTA Online. His statement reads as follows. You can't give stuff away for free in perpetuity. There's no business model in that. But we're not trying to optimize the monetization of everything we do to the nth degree. My concern is, if you do that, the consumer knows. They might not even know they know, but they feel it. We are convinced that we are probably, from an industry view, under-monetizing on a per-user basis. There is wood to chop because I think we can do more. And we can do more without interfering with our strategy of being the most creative and our ethical approach. Which is delighting consumers. Now, as you read that, you may think, okay, he's speaking like a businessman. Yes, he is. But listen to the things he says. If we monetize everything to the nth degree, the customer knows. They may not even know they know, but they feel it. Almost as though we're idiots who only perk up when we feel we're being ripped off. We have to be sneaky about the money we take from our customers. But hey, at least he's being honest, right? At least he's a good old honest Joe with a crappy heart. Barry, why does this bother you so much? Well, let me try to explain. GTA V has been one of the top-selling games since its release. In almost every summer sale or discount you look for that is sold directly through them, you will almost always pay $60. Sure, the game is $30, but we're throwing in $30 worth of shark cards. What a value! Speaking of shark cards, the game is riddled with microtransactions, and the grind is what you'd expect from a freemium title. Okay, okay, Barry, that's all well and good, but at least he was right about the free updates. That's pretty cool, right? Of course it is, and I appreciate them greatly. That's how it's been doing so well. However, with the updated vehicles costing millions of dollars, this grind we talked about becomes a huge factor, and those shark cards start to look pretty tasty. With the game selling so well, them not discounting the game in a real way most of the time, and their implementation of microtransactions, this quote from Zelnix starts to boil my blood. We're not trying to optimize the monetization to the nth degree. This man does in fact think you're stupid. But it isn't the CEO that has me making this video. Not two weeks after this man said what he did about his consumers, Open4 had been issued a cease and desist. If you don't know what Open4 is, it's a program that was designed by a small modding team to open up modding to the GTA community. And this program and team have been around for years. The company responsible for the takedown of this modding tool? Well, it was none other than Take-2 Interactive. If you went to download Open4, you were met with an explanation of why their software no longer existed, which went a little something like this. Take-Two decided that our software allows third parties to defeat security features of its software and modify that software in violation Take-Two's rights. Apparently, the original letter was grammatically flawed. The modding team said they could have pursued this in court and most likely would have won, but simply did not have the time. They said a heartfelt goodbye and a thank you to all the support throughout the years. Now, why in the hell were mods removed? I'm sure if I open this up to the audience, I may get suggestions like, well, there are a lot of hackers online, maybe this was the cause of the takedown. And that would be an excellent point, if Open4 actually affected the multiplayer at all. See, Open4 only opened up mods for the single player aspect of the game. It had very little, if any at all, connections to Grand Theft Auto Online. Even if people were hacking in money, or guns, or cars, or anything else into their single player mode, it would have not mattered at all. In fact, it was praised by Rockstar. Rockstar opened domains and created pages on their website dedicated to their favorite mods in GTA V. Rockstar has always loved the modding community, and they've been very vocal about that. 
Despite that, single player mods had totally been wiped out with multiplayer mods being able to stick around. Of course, Take Two calls online modding illegal and threatens account shutdowns, but this isn't news to anyone. This was GTA Online day one. However, another few days later, after dealing with all the consumer backlash that Take-Two was receiving, the cease and desist was retracted. Take-Two claimed that they believed Open 4 was being used to mess with players online and ended with a hearty, oops, my bad, no hard feelings, right? About the whole situation. Well, Take-Two, I guess that solves everything. I totally forgive you. Except, this whole ordeal was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, and let me explain why. GTA has been one of the top selling games since its release. It makes a ton of money from that alone. GTA is full of microtransactions that never bothered me. I always felt I could earn everything fairly. As updates came out with several million dollar add-ins, this became more difficult to earn fairly. All of a sudden, the CEO feels he's not milking his consumers enough. The company then decides mods are illegal. Oh wait, everyone's mad at us. Just kidding. Here's some BS about Open 4 affecting multiplayer. As much as I love Rockstar and their games, this is really annoying and kind of had me legitimately thinking differently about the game itself. When it comes down to it, Take-Two has shown me that they simply don't care about you. They don't care about me, they don't care about Rockstar, and they don't care about their games. They only want to make money, and this is the kind of behavior that warrants backlash. It always gives me a little bit of faith in us gamers when we come together and show these companies that they aren't actually in charge. I mean, if you go to Steam right now and you look up Grand Theft Auto V, you may see something like this. Now, does this mean that I won't be playing the game anymore? Well, God, no. The game is still fun and I still like Rockstar, but I don't feel very guilty anymore when I jump into a server and hackers are feeding me money. It used to bother me, but now I think I'll embrace it. You want to give me a grind, that's fine. You want to be a greedy prick about it? Well, I guess I'll just decide your grind isn't worth my time. I guess our stupid little minds can feel it when something is off, which seems like a real bummer for you. Seriously guys, don't hack in GTA Online. It can actually ruin the game for everyone, but just for fun. If a hacker offers to give you a million dollars, why not take two?